So consequently, you know, this is, uh, you know, just uh, talking about kind of the dysfunctional family system on the level of culture. You know, we, we start talking yeah. about the British right, 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 system yeah. sure. of, in yeah. which parents had almost no exposure to their children right. at all. Yeah. Children had no exposure to their parents. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. and then they're sent off to boarding schools up through college, which means they, those boarding schools are generally, the bo girls went to one right. school, the boys went to another school. Right, right. So the boys and girls had almost no interaction with them, at, with each other at all, uh, to the point that uh, children uh, became sexually aware in a uh, monosexual environment, right? Which would promote homosexuality. Sure. So the British were highly homophobic. Uh, but the reason why, I believe, is because they had all had homosexual relationships all through school. And by the time they became uh, all, you know, graduated from high school or college, they could then get married. But by then they were in their mid-20s. They'd had... 10 or 12 years of sexual relationships with uh, members of the same sex in boarding school, and they were never going to talk about it because uh, the level of homophobia oh. that existed in British right. culture. Right. Right. And they would get to the point where, okay, they had to get married, and they had to reproduce oh. because that was a given, right, in <laughs> yes. British culture. Yeah. But they were going to uh, court and marry a, f a member of the opposite sex, and they had no real encounters with members of the opposite sex other than their sisters and cousins, and only on holidays. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there would be, mm -hmm. so by the time they could get married, they really didn't know how to be turned on by a female, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they had mm -hmm. been s homosexual yeah. up through boarding school. But they grinned and bared through it, and that was really the foundation of the dysfunctional British family mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, they make it illegal to be homosexual because a fair number of British men went, you know what? This system doesn't work. I've been sexually active with men all my life. I don't. I, women don't even turn me on. I think I'll just be with men. And then that became illegal, and a few men were thrown in prison. What was his name? Uh, the writer, famous. Quentin Crisp. No, that, uh, was, that was one. Oh, 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 oh. oh. In eighteen ninety. Yeah. Oh, okay. Crowley. Oh, okay. Was it Crowley? Alistair Crowley. Yeah, he was, was it Alistair Crowley? No. I think it was. He I think it was be. Alistair Crowley. He, well, he, he was. Likely. Was it Alistair? I think it was Alistair Crowley was um, spent like 10 years in prison or something like that. Oh, okay. I was, for being a homosexual. And then he gets out and and the man who was his lover moves in with him uh, and they lead, and they I think moved to Italy or something. Like that. Spent and Alistair spends his last days. Uh, picture of Dorian Gray. I mean, the writer of uh, was he homosexual as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't made a, you know, I haven't made a, a full study of homosexuality, nor am I interested in it, but, um, but I am interested in understanding the dysfunctional, you know, family. The, the dysfunctional family yes. system and dysfunctional <laughs> cultural system yeah. Yeah. and having yeah. spent yeah. some time growing up in the British Commonwealth I had, yeah. I had a good insight into right. the dysfunctional family system, it, you know, because I, you know, I went to boarding schools and British boarding schools. I was caned, you know, and they were they were brutal, by the way. The British oh. uh, school system was horribly brutal to children, and mm. uh, so I could see um, how that system would institutionalize homosexuality, but at the same time. The culture rejected homosexuality, and I, and I found that kind of interesting. You know, why would they do that? And I think the reason why they did it is because if they sanctioned homosexuality, 
nobody in that culture would have been getting married <laughs> and reproducing. Well, and I think a lot of the, the marriages were very, pretty close to a, an arranged marriage. And that's another aspect you know, of it. You're and, right. And, you the know, because, marriages were usually for power. Yeah. Right? And yeah, so it was yeah. an arranged marriage. So, so And so just, there was no love involved anyway. Right. And... Uh, and in fact, I'd be willing to bet yeah. that a fair percentage of the children or the offspring of those marriages were not uh, the the uh, husband and wife of record. Right, sure, sex, sure, right? sure. Sex sure. was going on with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For instance, I think it would be fascinating to do a DNA study right. of all right. the right. of all the royal families of Europe. <laughs> Right. right, right, and you probably find that very few of the kings sired their own children. Right, right. For instance, right. for like Alexander the Great's dad didn't sire him. Sure. Yes. But at the same time, uh, even in in Greek culture, it was uh, homosexuality was actually revered. Uh, a man still had to re reproduce to be a man. Right? <laughs> Oh, and then, uh, and then I think one of the, if we look at, let's say, you know how uh, Western Civ is studied basically from what Mesopotamia through the British Empire, right, and, uh, and we're seeing, we're shown how culture evolves, and the Greeks, of course, fit significantly in that. But when we study Greek culture, we find out, you know, that there's a fair amount of rape and pillage going on. That's how the Greeks Well, their... <laughs> everybody else is a barbarian. <laughs> right. So, but you, so you, could do, you, know, you could definitely do that to them, the barbarians. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they did a fair amount of murdering off all the men. Yeah. And then they take the women captive, sometimes turn them into wives, and oftentimes murder the children of the previous marriage, right? And I, and I remember, you know, when I'm <laughs> going through all these Western Civ classes and the history of art and all this kind of stuff, I'm going, what was it like for a woman who saw her husband and her children murdered in front of her? And then she'd be taken captive by the murderer of her husband uh, and children yeah. and turned into his wife, and she'd yeah. have to bear him children. Right. And right, it's, right. Uh, to me, that sounds like the war uh, foundation of a really dysfunctional family <laughs> system. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm home, dear. <laughs> and how was the office, honey? Right, right, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, but by the time they got to the 19th century, and maybe even the, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, the British ruled the world, you know, so, and, and and they en they ended up producing all, all, all you know they had so much money that they ended up producing uh, children that that uh, never would work. Right. And, and, and oh, uh, that you're talking about the 19th century British, right? Large, 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 right. Yeah. British yeah. culture. That's true. You know, yeah. they, they, you know, the and, and, middle and, class developed right so much wealth that uh, yeah. yeah, that the, uh, the as in, you know, amazing. And and, and right. uh, I mean, I, I mean, even even though I mean, my uh, my aunt, my grandfather's sister, uh, whose husband was German. Uh, I knew who he owned a few uh, mills in the United States, textile mills, and and one of the things that that, 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 that he that he liked the, the idea was that his son would never have to work. Oh, okay. That that I mean that was a curious one. Hmm. And never you know and. Uh, well, I think that's the expression of affluence. When, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, right? yeah when your yeah. children don't have to work, <laughs> then that means you're affluent. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking uh, of back to our little conversation mm -hmm. about Yogananda and his dad who owned the Indian Railroad. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. his dad mm -hmm. had become wealthy enough that he could buy his son an ashram in Hollywood and so that his son could be the guru to the stars. Mm -hmm. That's like the ultimate 
uh, expression of Indian affluence. Yeah. When your son can be a guru. And people don't look at that kind of backstory right. behind why things are the way they are. For instance, okay, the Catholic Church is the way it is. Well, who were the people who became the priests, cardinals, bishops, you know, and popes of the Catholic Church? Well, they all came from wealthy and affluent families. And typically, the number one son would basically, like all the wealth and power of the family would descend to the number one son. But if they got two, number two, number three, number four son, they've got to figure out what to do with those sons. So, uh, so some of those sons would go into the clergy and be, and they would be bought a position in which they'd walk in uh, as a cardinal, you know, bishop, cardinal, or even a pope. <laughs> the Medici's actually bought, and I think it was a 12-year-old or an 18-year-old pope. <laughs> Money talks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Money talks. And, and then other sons, you know, during the colonial period, to me, what the colonial period was really driven by was surplus sons of the middle class. So you've got the wealth and the power and the land and everything has to go to the first son. Right. But if you've got other sons, maybe some of them will go into the clergy, but others will become, you know, they'll go off and colonize. Mm -hmm. And they'll get vast lands and slaves and, you know, pro uh, property <laughs> and uh, uh, do something, you know, they'll acquire their own wealth but the f wealthy family will help fund that venture you know they'll mm -hmm. maybe buy a few ships and yeah. hire the people who run the ship and send the son off to conquer some part of the, the uh, world and come back with great wealth